What is up, Rad Potential? YouTube has been not quite a minute, but a minute since we've been in the shop. So, finally, ideally, this video, bringing this thing, actually no, in this video is the end of the white car project. So, I've got to slap this carburetor on it, got to put the new fuel pump in it, and it should be good to go. Ideally, Charles is coming over tomorrow to help me button it up when you do anything with the timing or adjust the carburetor. So my goal for tonight, what I'm going to get accomplished tonight, carburetor, fuel pump on, and then we're good. The second thing that I need to do today, as you know, or if you've been following along long enough, I've had issues with my air compressor. DeWalt, it's junk. It's made by some other manufacturer, not DeWalt. The only good thing about it being a DeWalt is that they're willing to warranty anything. So, not only have I had to get a warranty motor, electric motor, it wouldn't make any pressure. So, what did I do? Well, I'd already had it apart once before, and I knew that the reed plate was a little jacked up whenever I had it apart the first time, because I've been fighting like low pressure issues with this thing for a while. So what they do? I got a new reed plate and a new head for my air compressor. So I gotta install that stuff at some point, which will be good. Hopefully get it fixed up. So, that's also needs to happen tonight. Because if you can notice, this tire's holding there. That one's holding there. But, that one's not holding there. So I gotta get some air in this guy, air the rest of these up. And I just don't have an air compressor, besides that one, and then a the little baby like car one. So the car's a little not right centered in the garage, but who cares? We're gonna go ahead and jack this thing up, put slap this fuel pump in, slap the new carburetor on, or the rebuilt one on, second time rebuilt. And uh, and then we should be uh, should be cooking with gas. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get to it. All right, so camera battery died. I'm gonna have to refilm the clip. So if you remember what I said about my air compressor, the reeds on the reed plate were cracked. So what happened is, this is your reed plate here, and the reeds in the head are here. So these little reeds here, when the pistons go down, they suck air past the reed, and then when they go back up, it pushes the reed close, and then it forces the air through the set of reeds on this plate, which then pushes the air into the tank, making compressed air for me. When these crack like this, this reed's gonna fall out, or the parts of it'll fall out. And imagine you dropped a valve in your big block Chevy. Parts are gonna hit each other, and things are gonna get all mangled up. So you can see all the dents and dings in the tops of my pistons. This one's not as bad as that one. From where that reed smacked it a whole bunch of times. So, from what it looks like, the, uh, the cylinder wall seems okay. Doesn't look too scratched up, scored up, really tore up. So, what I'm doing is clean this head off. And I'm just going to put, they sent me, so I got a new head and a new reed plate from DeWalt. You get this bag open real quick. Really don't know what the filter's for. Looks like we got new bolts. This is the head. Gasket kit. So, new gaskets. If you look, there's a reed plate. And this is what those reeds are supposed to look like on there. So you see how they're nice and Good. Not cracked. So, I gotta pop this cover off so I can bolt the new head on. I'm gonna put these new gaskets on here too. And then, uh, we should be ready to rock. I'm gonna assume these are new bolts. I don't think these are tension bolts. Yep, new bolts. Let's see if there's any torque specs. Torque specs for the head bolts included in this kit should be 20 to 24 foot pounds. Good thing we got a torque wrench. We're gonna torque them down. All right, so I'm gonna slap this new head on here. We'll see if this thing holds some pressure. <coughs> Update on this. I got the fuel pump on. I know which way is pump out and pump in and all that jazz. Um, I spilled a bunch of fuel down there so I didn't really feel like crawling under there to do it. So I stopped so I could work on the compressor. So tonight I'm just gonna get that compressor going. Tomorrow Charles will be here, I'll finish up the fuel pump, and we'll get this baby fired up.
So that's the goal for tomorrow. But if the compressor's fixed tonight, then that means I can air the tires up tomorrow, which is equally as important. So we'll put this together. Alrighty, YouTube people. So this video is kind of a mishmash of stuff I've been doing over the past, we'll just say, week. So we shredded the BMW. Worked on this car a little bit. Got it running. Got it fired up. Charles came over. We drove it under its own power. I didn't really film any of it because, well, it was like productivity, not filming. So we got that stuff done. However, it won't idle. And it's a little hard to start. And the reason that it won't idle, I think, is because it's got a vacuum leak. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this ingenious thing we call a smoker. So basically, this is a paint can. It's full of baby oil, it's got a sock in it, some nuts and bolts, just to help keep that in. This right here, or no, this right here is a diesel pickup truck glow plug that goes down the baby oil. When you shoot her up with 12 volts, it boils the oil, right? So, how do you get it out? You take this guy, standard issue grill pressure regulator, you plug that into your air chuck, and you hook the red cover up spot into some sort of vacuum line or like from in my case what I'm probably going to do is tape this hole off and then hook it up to the bottom of the of the uh, the air cleaner so it pumps that down into the carburetor and then I'll be able to see if there's any vacuum leaks between the carburetor and the engine yes the thing does pump out some smoke so I'm going to go ahead and hook this baby up and I'll show you where the vacuum leak comes from. All right, y'all, so we got the air compressor hooked up to that. We're getting ready, I'm gonna put this battery on. We should start seeing smoke come out of that vacuum line. I have the whole um, engine bay, comp or engine bay. We'll just say I have all of the uh, carburetor stuff sealed off, so I think. So right now, we should start getting some smoke. Come out of here shortly. There we go. Look at the smoke. So now what we're gonna do? I'm gonna have to set the camera down. We're gonna plug this baby into here. Come on. Come on. And then we should be able to see. Where this is leaking from, which as you can see, it looks like we've got some pinhole rust holes in this. That's leaking out of that. Kinda need like a fan on here to blow some of this stuff out of the way so you can just see where it's spitting out. I'm gonna grab a fan. Alright. So I set up this little fan. So we can look to see where stuff's coming out. Obviously the intake's leaking. The blue thing. Move out of the way, dog. And it looks like the vacuum leak down there between the... Oh, okay. So it's between the two plates of the carburetor, not between the... Uh, not the base gasket. Okay. Alright, so if you look, see where it's all just coming out right down there? I'm gonna just turn this thing off. Dang, that pumps out some fucking smoke. So, where it's actually leaking, and I don't have a Nikki sitting around to show you, but I can show you on this Holly. So, on these carburetors, there's your your, we'll call it like the throttle blade plate or whatever, and then you have the actual body of the carburetor. So, if you look here, this piece here, where the blades are, right there, is separate from the center section, right, where your actual bore is. This is a 650 double pumper. So if you look, you see the throttle plates. That's a separate piece. That one is leaking between these two pieces, right here, not at the base plate, which is where I thought it was. So, kind of no bueno, but not entirely terrible. I just 100% smoked out my shop with this thing. But, uh, 
that's no bueno. Guess we gotta take the carburetor back off and stuff. So go ahead and just kill that. So I don't know if I can entirely fix that tonight, but I guess my goal for tonight is to get this carburetor back off here and uh, we'll start looking at that. So next. Alright y'all, the sleet, which has changed from rain to sleet, has persisted now. Figured I'd show y'all my second favorite Fast and Furious car from all of the series. Right here, this Monte Carlo. Look at that row presence. Anyways, we'll pause that. Back to, you know, Mazdas and stuff. So, carburetor, gone. It's over here. Um, basically, with all that stuff, let me grab my flashlight. So y'all can see the smoke was coming out right here. So basically, um, a little more light right in there. You can kind of see where we've had a fuel leak, what it looks like coming out right there for a while. I don't know. It looks like the gasket's in there. Um, it might not be the right gasket considering, I don't know if you can see that. See that big old crack? Looks like it's the wrong gasket. I got this light shining here. Oh, the blades are closed. Well, it's above the blades. Um, where is it? Yeah, you can see light. So if I shine this, see right there, the light coming on and off. So we've got a mega vacuum leak. Oh, if I shine this down up in here, you can't really see it today. But I got a mega vacuum leak right there. And like I mentioned before, I'm not a Nikki carburetor expert. I guess I'm going to be after this because I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that. But uh, most likely I'm going to try to get this carburetor back to Charles so he can pull that base plate apart and get me the right gasket or something in there to get that one fixed. Just because it needs to be fixed so we don't have a vacuum leak. That should fix our hard start issue and also fix our, uh, oh, and the fact that it won't idle. I mean, it's just sucking a bunch of air. So, in essence of trying to get uh, a couple videos out for you sooner, I'm probably just going to clip this up, post it up tomorrow, just because of the rain and the sleet and stuff, and uh, yeah, so the next video, hopefully, will be putting that carburetor back on, or, if that's not what the next one is, then uh, I'll be going to Indianapolis this weekend to help Justin work on some beamers, so we're taking the E30 E46 silver motor out, putting it in his E46 wagon. Um, so, look forward to that, which I know this isn't really like a BMW dealy whopper, but um, we work on everything here at the Rad Ranch, or Mr. Rad does me. So, time to take the old doggo inside and call it a night. Thanks for tuning in. Keep it rad.